This is my RSD middle child, and I'm not exaggerating when I say it's the most fun bike that I've ever owned. And that's saying something because I've been riding all sorts of bikes, all sorts of sizes for 10 or 15 years. Today, I'm gonna to tell you a little bit more about not only the frame, but the components that I'm riding on this bike that make it the ultimate play machine. If Strava times and enduro results are the things that get you motivated to go out on a ride, then you might wanna skip past this video. But if you're all about going out there, having a ton of fun, and as I like to say, turning the trail into the skate park, then stick around and I'm gonna tell you what I've done to this thing to make it feel like a big boys BMX bike. If you've watched any videos on our channel before, you've probably heard me call the frame of the bike the skeleton, and it really sets the tone for the way that a bike will ride. And the playful nature of this bike starts with the frame, the RSD middle child. I ride a size large frame, and at six foot one, most people would probably call that downsizing. This frame here has a 465 millimeter reach, a 440 millimeter seat tube. That's really on the short end, and I love that about this bike. Speaking of short, it's got 415 to 430 millimeter chain stays. I've ridden it in a lot of different settings. Right now it's about three quarters of the way back. That's how I have it set up to keep my single speed tension, but I'll talk more about that in a little bit. It's also got a relatively high bottom bracket with just 40 mils of bottom bracket drop. Bottom bracket drop is probably one of the most underrated geometry figures. Most people just kind of glance right past it, but it makes just as big of a difference in how pop your bike is, how easy it is to get that front wheel off the ground as a short chain stay does. Finally, it's got a 64 and a half degree head tube angle, which I think is just about perfect if you want a bike that's still capable on gnarly, chunky, steep trails, but is also gonna be a lot of fun on mellower trails or even at a skate park or dirt jump park. Another thing I really appreciate about this frame is just how robust and beefy it is. This is the aluminum model. RSD makes the same frame in chromoly and titanium, and all three of those bikes are super bomb proof which gives me the confidence to huck it off stuff that I probably shouldn't be taking a hardtail down. But even the best frame can be ruined by a horrible part spec. So I've been pretty intentional about all the parts that I've put on this bike. Starting at the front of the bike, I've got the Spank Spoon bars in a 40 millimeter rise. Like I said earlier, I'm six foot one, but ride a size large, which means that the stack height is usually a little lower than I like. So I tend to ride bars with a little bit more rise. I've also got the DMR Defi stem, and this is a super sweet stem. It's one of the few stems on the market right now that actually raises the bars instead of drops the bars. And as you can see by the number of headset spacers I have under there, again, I like having those bars a little higher up. So that was the reason I went with that DMR Defi. Speaking of DMR, I've got some well-loved death grips on here that are probably about ready to be replaced. For braking, I've got the SRAM Guide RE brakes. I believe that all aggressive hardtails should have four piston brakes because let's be real, these things can get out of control pretty quick. Those are mated to 180 mil rotors front and back. Finally, I've got the latest model RockShock Lyric up front and it's actually a Lyric Select, not the Ultimate. I went ahead and got these custom graphics so it would match my frame. I guess I'm a little vain in that sense, but I really liked how the chrome kind of tied everything together. I run this fork at about 125 PSI with two volume spacers. Paired with that, I just keep the compression wide open and keep the rebound about five or six clicks away from its fastest setting. I've been really impressed with the performance of that Lyric Select fork, and I would highly recommend it to anybody who's looking for a high performance fork, but is on a little bit of a budget. Another cool thing about these Select forks is all the internal components can be replaced with the stuff that comes on the Lyric Ultimate. So over time, you could actually turn this into a Lyric Ultimate if you really wanted to. But again, I don't see any need. This fork has been more than enough for me. I'm still running the OEM front wheel off of my old Marin San Quentin. That wheel has just refused to die, so I've refused to replace it. In the back, however, I've got the Race Face Affect R wheel, and that thing's been pretty dialed. I have had a bit of an issue, though, where I've had a lot of drag in the cassette. The bearings all seem fine, but there's definitely some kind of sticky drag in there that keeps the cranks from spinning super freely, and that's made doing crank flips and other fun stuff like that a little bit more challenging. So if you have any suggestions on how to get rid of that drag, let me know. I've also got some Race Face Affect R cranks, these have been super bomb proof. I've actually snapped a pair of cranks before, so I always try to get some stronger cranks and these have not let me down. Attached to those cranks are some E13 basic pedals, and I have been extremely surprised by these. I bought them from a local shop because they were the cheapest plastic pedal they had in stock and I was broke at the time, and they are super grippy. They've got a real nice big platform, and I've been really impressed with how well they've worked. 
Holding all that together is a race face bottom bracket, which after six months of pretty heavy riding has developed zero creaks, zero drag. So I'm pretty happy with it. One of the more surprising spec choices on this bike are my tires. They're the Bontrager XR4 tire. I've only been riding these tires for about six months, but they've completely blown me away. I did a full review on them. So if you wanna really get into the nitty gritty on that, you can check that out here. But they've been super strong. They're relatively lightweight, relatively fast rolling. And to be honest, I'm not switching back to the Maxxis DHF DHR2 that I was running before. I will say though, that the sidewalls on these XR4 tires are not the most robust. Because of that, I run 30 PSI in the front and in the back, as well as a Tannis tubeless insert in the back. So obviously that's a little bit on the higher side, but it's worked super well for me. I hate getting flats and I've only gotten one since I put these tires on about six, nine months ago. Speaking of surprises, I believe that the playful nature of a bike has just as much to do with what's on it as what's not on it. And as you've probably seen already, I run a single speed setup. I swapped over to a single speed about three months ago and I've really enjoyed it. It definitely makes mountain biking a lot more simple. Kind of feels like the old days of riding around on a BMX bike and it challenges you. It pushes you out of your comfort zone and makes you try new things and it just keeps mountain biking fresh. I've made a couple of videos on my thoughts on single speed here on the channel. So you can check those out if you're interested and learn more about it. As you can see, I also read an E13 chain guide. I like doing a lot of fakie tricks and especially when I had the derailleur on there before, when you're pedaling backwards, your chain really likes to derail. So the chain guide has helped prevent that and just keeps things extra secure, extra tight, and prevents any unwanted chain drops. I say all the time that I wouldn't mountain bike if dropper posts didn't exist. So thankfully I've got one. It's a KS post with 150 mils of travel. I'd like to get a longer post on here because it has such a short seat tube, just haven't forked out the cash to do it yet. To be honest, there's not much that I would change about this bike. Like I mentioned at the start of this video, this thing seriously feels like a big BMX bike. And if you wanna make your everyday trail rides that much more fun, I can't recommend this bike enough. And if you go on RSD's website right now and use the discount code JOSH5OFF, you'll get 5% off any of their frames, any of their complete bikes, everything they have on their site. If you've got any more questions about my frame, the parts I'm running or how I have it set up, go ahead and let me know in the comments and I will definitely get back to you on that. While you're down there, go ahead and hit the like, hit the subscribe, then get off your computer, get on your bike, go for a ride. Hopefully I'll see you out there.